Good afternoon. I'm back. I don't know if people are on Go Go Grio and mysteriously I was <laughs> it was interrupted. We won't go there. I am going to go back and start this video over because I want to talk to you today about ancestral healing. If you've been following me and if you're here, you've been following me one way or another. You know, I call myself Gogo Grio when it comes to ancestral healing. Gogo means elder in South Africa, and Grio means storyteller in West Africa. And I am the eldest of one side of my family. And I am a storyteller. And storytelling goes with ancestral healing because our ancestors, their lives are stories. And those stories can live within us or be lost or cause us problems. And that's why I'm here to talk about ancestral healing. Now we always talk, start these things off with talking about who am I to be talking about ancestral healing? Well, I studied with Jen Alvarez, the Rainmaker, Toltec, Ancestral Healing and Healing Practices. I am also a Reiki master through uh, study with Lisa Powers. And I have been practicing Vajrayana Buddhism for over 20 years. And so that is my qualifications. I was also a registered nurse. Now, you can actually get a better hearing of my transformational experience if you see the live in Gogo -Go Grio. And I may put these together since they were separated. Whoever you are, thank you for visiting and watching. I don't know how to make respond because it's all different here on Facebook. But my transformational experience happened when I had an ancestral healing with one of my classmates who was studying Toltec healing with me. And it was the first time in my life that I felt the emotions of my ancestors going through Capture, ships, sold, raped, abused, worked to death. The fact that black people still survived, so many survived conditions that lasted for over 200 years. And people think that you're just supposed to get over it. And we bury and pretend we have not been affected by what affected those who came before us. But the reason black people suffer bad health, from diabetes, from poverty, from abuse, from addiction, is because we still haven't cleared up our ancestors who suffered so much just to survive so that their children could survive. So that now there are many of us, millions of us here, we have black blood and white blood and red blood and Asian blood in one single person. And all of that ancestral energy. So my transformational experience was so deep. I cried through the healing. And when I came out, I felt released, free, clear clear, able to go and do 
whatever needed to get done. And it was at that time, it happened just before the um, insurrections and demonstrations of 2020 and the pandemic. And I started doing racial story healing circles. And oddly enough, those were the first money I was making as in my business. Because I saw the story sharing was good, but it wasn't enough. It didn't go deep enough. And soon, though, I was invited to do an ancestral healing with a group of mindfulness practitioners in England and Europe. And their response let me know I did indeed have a calling and a gift. And since then, I've given healings to several people. And I'll share some of their testimonials later. But now let's get into the meat of this topic. Recently, Daniel Four, who offers a certificate in ancestral healing, did a webinar, well, a video, in which he said, the title was, Am I Making This Up? And because a lot of people probably look at ancestral healing, well, people look in different ways. Some people still think it's devil worship. And of course, you can easily say, am I making this up? Because we're dealing with energy. But let us understand. Science has shown us. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. Therefore, and everything that exists is energy. Even the rocks have energy in them. And so the human being, when we leave this, the consciousness, our mind, whatever you want to call it, just because this human body is gone, does not mean the energy that ultimately keeps us alive is gone. It's transformed. And it manifests in all kinds of ways. And recently, in the past few years, medical scientists have been showing and proving that trauma can be passed generationally down. Particularly, they've shown it with people who suffered from World War II. Think of what people, Black people, suffered. Yes, it was terrible what happened. Terrible what happened. In World War II, that was four years, maybe 10 if you go the farthest. 200 years of physical, mental, emotional abuse, which has continued to some degrees with the stereotyping and injustices that continue based on race, which have so little validity because it is obvious that this country is no longer a black or white country. It is a very mixed up country with mixed people of all kinds of races and sexual persuasions and ideas. And in a way, this is really wonderful. But it frightens some people whose ancestors are still stuck. Because ideally, if now, you may not believe this, but let's just take a little trip. Ideally, we are energy. This energy is not created or destroyed, it's just transformed. So when this energy in this body leaves and it's floating around, how does it manifest? How does it affect others? I'm sure you have had the experience of walking in a room and feeling energy that's uncomfortable after an argument or a fight or God forbid a murder. You can feel the energy, the fear, the sorrow, the anger. Everyone knows this. We all have feelings. We have all felt things. Even 
people who have different ways of feeling. They have some feelings. They're just not the way we feel like autistic people. So these feelings are from energy that exists. So ancestral healing has existed since humans have existed. Since the beginning of time. Now in Christianity, the first ancestor was God because he created the first humans. And that God is the same God for Jews and Muslims. And some people, the God has different names in India and Asian religions. And in Buddhism, God is such a vast topic to be discussed. They just say it's all vast emptiness from which all of creation arrives. And, you know, who can approach God directly? This vast emptiness, though, from which all creation comes. And in which our ancestors exist as energy. Now, medical science has shown that trauma does reside in, in our DNA, in our genetics, and can be transferred. So people who are continuing to suffer in any way, and you haven't found any help, it may be an ancestral need. You may have an ancestral calling you, telling you they need you because you have a body and your body can help release the weight they are still carrying. Whether it's the weight of abuse, whether it's the weight of trauma, whether it's the weight of unfulfillment, whether it's the weight of not having their dreams materialize, whether it's the weight of guilt or fear, how those things come up and manifest in our lives vary and are different. But we who are physical can actually help our ancestors. And when you help your ancestors, you help yourself and your lineage to come. And even though I don't have children directly, I have nieces and nephews, and they can be helped. And the lineages go on. So when we talk about ancestral healing, one of the most well-known examples of ancestral healing is Imhotep. He was a doctor and an architect. He was a multi-talented man who lived in Egypt. And he served the pharaohs and other people. He built buildings. And when he died, the stories about him grew and grew and what he did. And eventually he was worshipped as a god. And there are stories of African queens who became worshipped as gods and goddesses. Out of this worship and veneration of outstanding healers or leaders, people also, particularly in African traditions and other traditions, would venerate and remember and recall their ancestors who were strong and helped the community, who were healers or teachers or artists or warriors. And in many of these countries, and particularly in Africa, these ancestral relations were connected to healings and rituals and births and marriages and deaths. But with colonialism and the justification for dehumanizing other human beings, everything of value Everything that nurtured and gave meaning and sustenance to Africans was taken away from them to make them, in the eyes of the owners, 
just animals to be used, not human beings with minds and creativity equal to theirs. So that's a great burden. And I truly believe that ancestral healing can contribute significantly to releasing the racial animosity and class animosity and economic animosity and educational animosity that exists in this country in which everyone's created equal. I have to slow down. So it's important to at least acknowledge, yes, you have ancestors. If you are alive and happen upon this video, you have ancestors and they impact your life. And you can impact their existence and benefit more from them by connecting with them. And that's why I'm offering some activities that allow you to connect, to help you connect with your ancestors. Now, it's not just me. I've had clients, and one client in particular has been very impacted by her experience of ancestral healing. And her name is Denny Van de Boot. And she shared. Connection. It's a Facebook group, and you're welcome to join it. This is what Denny said. <clears throat> it's been a while since Gogo -Go Grio and I met online for my second ancestral healing. It has up, brought up so much, and I really need the time to integrate all the emotions and perceptions. In the Netherlands, we're not used to show our feelings. We are colonized to be workers and to keep grinding and grinding, to never stop, not even when we're hurting. In this mindset, I started the healing process. It was intense as for the first time in my life, I felt emotions I didn't even know I was able to feel. So much came up. For the first time in my life, I take the time and pay total attention to my own healing. Released so much, changed so many perceptions, I am decolonized, I am free, I love myself unconditionally. Forever grateful to Gogo Grio for leading me on this path. Denny Van Den Boo. And she wrote that just a couple of months ago. And she's in our group and is active and has other sharings. You can read about her, the letter she wrote to her mother and father, how she's reunited with her brother and sisters in the group, Ancestral Healing for Healers, the Energy Connection. And if you want to continue this, I am offering a group experience, Meet the, Your Ancestors in March and in April. It'll be a premium group, the Healing Journey, the Ancestral Healing Journey, which is a three month group experience with four ancestral healings, monthly meetings, activities, group support. Now the Meet Your Ancestors, it's just a one-time Zoom event that will be recorded. You can keep, but it will be an experience, a ritual and enlightening and lifting experience to help you connect with your ancestors. As there is no one here, I'm going to end this video while we are still on. I will be sharing this 
wherever you are, if you are interested in ancestral healing, please connect with me. Go, go, Grio. You can connect on my page. You can D leave a message on the page. You can contact on the Facebook um, group, Ancestral Healing for Healers. Or you can write go, go at go, go, Grio dot us. Thank you for listening. And wherever you are, remember to smile, breathe deeply, and be grateful to your ancestors. Bye.